William Idell back again with the Creative Core for another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about Photoshop's beta version and what's been the biggest buzz for the last few days is the generative fill feature. So let's dive into it and see what we can create. Okay, so when I got the news of this new update on Photoshop, I was actually in Atlanta shooting for Momocon and um, I woke up one morning just to go over some of the images that I shot the day prior and I was like, whoa, the update's already available, but I had to go download the Photoshop uh, beta version. Before you get started, if you do have an uh, Adobe Creative uh, Cloud account, this is what you're going to have to do first. You're going to have to go and download a uh the beta version of photoshop and we're going to show you how to do that right quick so what you want to do is pull up your creative cloud app once you do that you just have to search for the beta version they should have it on the front screen right here it'll say get the photoshop beta app and once you click on it you'll see all the different beta apps available as you can see they have some for premiere and after effects as well and illustrator uh then you want to click on download or install i already, I already installed it so once you've installed it, you will have access to it. So we'll go and click on that right quick, and then we'll go start having some fun. Now the possibilities I've been pondering on with this app, first of all, is updating old work that I've shot years ago um, and seeing what it looked like because there's a lot of portraits I shot that were close in and cropped uh, from a portrait standpoint, and there are some from a landscape standpoint, but there are certain things about the image that I might have not liked, or there were maybe light stands or props in the area that uh i couldn't you know get rid of due to, to small space or what have you but um i'm interested to see uh what we can do all right so once we have photoshop open as you can see i've already dabbled a little bit what i'm gonna do i'm gonna, I'm gonna go dig into some of my archives right so i'm pull up this folder for a photo shoot that i shot back in 2016 uh editorial and i'm gonna just go grab some of the retouched images that I've shot. Let's take a look at, all right, so we're gonna take a photo and we're gonna drag it into Photoshop, right? All right, so this is a crop image. I think I shot this with a 100 millimeter macro lens of my Canon at the time. I think I was shooting with a T23i, T, T3i, 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 uh, crop sensor Canon. And as you can see with the new beta version of Photoshop, once you open it, you will see at the bottom, this little tab here, that says select subject, remove background. And then if you hover over this, this will set, this is actually an adjustment panel, which will pop up over here. And then you have a drop down menu where you can hide the bar, reset the bar. And then you have another adjustment properties menu over here. So essentially what you can do with the new generative fill, the, the purpose of the generative fill is to either remove objects that you don't want in the image or to add objects that you don't want in the image. And with AI, like text to prompt, which will be like mid journey or dolly, uh, you'll be able to text in what you want. And the sensor, the, the algorithm, I think Adobe uses something called Sensei or something like that. It should be able to calculate it and add what you want or remove what you don't want. Or you could just click on generate and it'll, you know, just guesstimate, you know, what should go there. All right, so uh, I'm not gonna select the subject because I don't wanna remove um, anything from the background and I don't wanna remove the background, but what I wanna do is see what happens if I extend this subject over to the left and see if I can fill in the missing parts of her hair. I'm kind of curious to see what happened, right? So what I'm gonna do is just hit C for the crop tool and I'm gonna just hold down Alt uh, Option and slide that over. Well, actually just hold sh uh, shift. Oh no, just slide it over. Excuse me, I guess I didn't have the other thing clicked. So I'm gonna just slide that over. Then I'm gonna click the arrow key. And what I'm gonna do is grab my marquee tool and I'm gonna drag and select the empty area. And I wanna grab, the key part is you wanna you know click on some of the area of the image so it can have something to, I guess, you know go off or as on the basis. Um, you know, it has to have some type of reference. So you want to select piece of that image. You don't want to just grab just a white area because it's not going to, you know, know what you're doing. So grab a little, you know, maybe, you know, a few pixels of the, uh, the image just like that. And then you'll have a little option that says generate. So what I'm going to do is just click on generate fill. And as you can see at the bottom, it says describe what you like to generate or feel free to leave this blank. 
And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just leave it blank. Now I could type in what I want, but for this right here, I just wanna click in leave blank and I wanna see what it's gonna do. So let's click on generate. And as you can see um, in real time, it's gonna calculate what, you know, the best option is for, you know, the scenario. It should give you three different options to choose from, but I'm not sure how it is with images with higher resolution. So we're gonna see what Photoshop comes up with. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. I'm not sure if I like that too much. I'm gonna click on generate again and see if it gives me something different. That's the beauty about it. You don't have to, you know, settle with the first image it gives you. You can just click on it and it'll regenerate a different image. So let's see what happens. Wow, are you serious? The generate violation. So I do notice that uh, <clears throat> there are some uh, guidelines when it comes to like Photoshop when it says violation or whatnot. Um, in some instances, I think it would be more towards the nudity or if it feels like it's, you know, an explicit picture. But this isn't, and um, not only does it fill in the hair, it gives her a little bun in the back. It gives her just a little, you know, this little treat thing. Let me see something. Let me see if I can extend it out a little more and see what happens. Um, I think I might need to give it a little more space to think. Let me see. Just trying this out, guys. But this is, this is amazing for, <laughs> um, I mean, just to update my old portfolio. I mean, there's so many images that I have like this. I, you know, I like to shoot a lot of close-in beauty. I'm gonna just delete this one too. I like to uh, shoot a lot of close-in beauty uh, with like macro lenses and, you know, 85, 50 millimeter. And um, in so many cases, you know, I wish the shot, you know, would capture more, but since I'm sitting in so close, and actually, I'm gonna come in a little more closer to her face, about right here, and I'm gonna see what happens if I what happens with this. I'm gonna click on generate fill down here at the bottom, and just click on generate. And we're gonna let Photoshop do what it does and see what happens. I'm like, where was this years ago when I was sitting up hours and hours retouching photos when technology advances? I know a lot of people, like photographers and retouchers, might be pissed about this, but I mean, this can essentially help us in a lot when it comes to like um, post production and speeding up time. I don't care what nobody says. I mean, if you've been through the trenches since the early days of Photoshop, you know, this is like a playground to us. So I'm gonna enjoy it. All right, let's see what Photoshop has. Okay, I don't like her fingers. It's kind of reminded me of Mid Journey when they were trying to get their thing together with the fingers. I'm not too much feeling that. Let me see what the second second option is. Usually I give you three options, but I only have two from this one here. Um, uh, not too much feeling that one either. I'm gonna click on generate again. Now I'm, I'm gonna be upfront and honest. I did work on this photo. I tried it out yesterday and i was like i want to see some new results because i was going to be doing a tutorial about this but i if i recall i saved the images that i did from this test yesterday and i'm gonna pull those up because the ones i saw yesterday that it, it filled for me were freaking amazing so hopefully i saved them and i'm gonna see if i can pull them up because maybe uh i might be propped in a little too too much when it comes to her face i can't remember how close i came in yesterday but all right, that's pretty cool too. But let me go. Let me go dive in and see if I saved the ones from yesterday. Doesn't look like it. Um, kind of upset about that, man. Well, let's move on to the next image. Let's try something different, right? We have Miss V here, and let's go to Miss Blair. What do we have here? We have different looks. We have final looks. Today I'm just gonna be going through like some of my old work in the fashion and beauty uh, side of things and we're gonna see what happens, right? As you see, I got different looks, so let's drag one of these in right here, right? All right, so if I needed something fixed, right, what would I probably want fixed? I'll probably want this hand over here to be, you know, filled in, probably this shirt, maybe this arm. I mean, I don't know if Photoshop can do it, but let's see if it can. So let's just hold out, I mean, press C. Now I'm gonna hold out Alt and drag this out to about right there, maybe a little more with the arm. Click the check mark, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, the section I want right here, and the section I want, whoops, right there. I'm gonna take a little bit off of here. And I'm gonna click on generate fill. And we're just gonna click on generate and see what happens, right? Maybe Photoshop will fill it in, I don't know. But we're gonna take a look and see. This is one of my favorite shots, actually, when I was first uh, trying to find models down here in Savannah. Wow. <laughs> What? Are you serious? Are you serious right now? That is crazy. That is so crazy. It actually, so it got three options. So let's take a look. That's the first one. Well, variation. Let's take a look at the second variation, right? That was good too. I actually like that one because the arm is kind of more fluffed out compared to this one where it's like a little tucked in. That's if we're going a little more chic, I guess, you know, a more fitted shirt. 
This is giving a little more flair. Presses it out. And let's try the third one. All of them look amazing. Honestly, that is crazy. Um, yeah, let's try a different image. Uh, we're gonna try one more. Then uh, I'm gonna do another video. On, I have another idea that I wanna test this algorithm and see what happens, right? So um, let's take a look. Uh, fun size. Let's see what we got on fun size. Nothing in that folder. All right, let's take a look. Um, see what we have. All right. So we have Miss, uh, all right, let's close this one out. That one did a good job though. I should, man, I should have saved the one I got yesterday. I mean, it was, ah, yo, I, was, I thought this can't be real. I mean, there's no way. Um, all right, so let's drive it. Uh, I mean, drag in Miss Shanna. This is another beauty portrait I shot. Uh, I love the image. So I'm thinking I might want to add some more volume to the hair. So I'm gonna just grab my crop tool and i'm gonna just scoot this on up and scoot this over a little bit about right there and click okay the center of image and i'm gonna select my magic wand and just go ahead and grab that and go ahead and expand it out a few megapixels about maybe six so we could grab some of that edge. Let's go ahead and grab, expand it out a little more, about another five. All right, so we have that selected. Let's click on generate and let's see what happens. Man, if this thing fills this picture in, man, I'm stopping the tutorial. I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta take a breather. It's just insane. Oh my God, look at that. The whole shoulder's filled in. Are you serious right now? I'm not even tripping about the hair being like braided down like that, but the fact that it filled in the shoulder, let me take a look at the quality though, because it might not be as that sharp. It's actually not that bad. Let's take a look at the second uh, variation. That's not that bad either. And that's not that bad either. So let's try something different. Let's go and grab our lasso tool. Let me grab my tablet on this one instead of using my mouse. <clears throat> Got a whole tablet right here, right? So with the lasso tool, we're going to select just the hair, right? And in the general tool, we're going to type fill in Volump, volumetric, mm, voluptuous hair. I might be spelling that wrong, but don't don't laugh at me. And let's click on generate and see what happens. Now, I'm curious. I'm not sure if I need to click on the background layer first to do this, but we're gonna find out in a second. Either way, this is interesting. I mean, it's a learning process. I mean, so I'm about to find out. Oh no, I don't like that. That's giving. That's. We got a little bun. I actually shrunk her hair. No, 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 no. Now we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. So let's let's take a look and see something different, right? How about we do a still frame? I mean, we just merge all the, the layers together. That way we start with something fresh. And let's try this one more time. And let's select all this area over here. And now let's type in fill in and hit generate. Kind of curious. If it can't, I mean, either way with the shoulder being out like that, I'm still feeling that. <laughs> We went, we went full Shaniqua with it, right? I'm like, why had to be blonde? I mean, what are we doing right now? Photoshop, not not the lady working on the hair. <laughs> Is that the chopsticks, man? Are you serious? Pulling out the hair? Now that's pretty cool, I guess if she, I mean, it's different ways you could look at this, right? <clears throat> Me being in a fashion beauty, worked in that industry a little bit far as retouching and photography. Now, if I want to pitch this to a client far as like, you know, they were selling like hair products, shampoo or anything like that. This would be good. I'm, I'm not lying. This Something like this would be very interesting, you know, because you probably can add, you know, uh, let me click on generate again and see what happens. Well, fill in hair with Afro. Let me just try that and see what happens. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that's given, you know, a lot of, you know, get my, my hair shampoo, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm not liking that. Yeah, and that's that's real ghetto. No, we're not doing that. Okay, we got Mother Africa. I like that. That's pretty cool. I'm not feeling the blonde hair. What what is Photoshop doing right now? I'm not feeling that. All right, so that's the um that's the new generator fill tool in a nutshell. So basically, let me see if I could uh, find an image uh where I'm outside or someone's outside, so I can kind of give you like a different variation of what's going on, right? Um. Let me take a look and see what we have. Okay, so here's a shot I took in downtown Savannah, right? Uh, this is like down, you know, where uh, tourists usually walk at in downtown Savannah. So you have a different few things on here. Um, if this was a shot for, I don't know, maybe whatever, I don't know. But let's just see like how this generative tool works, right? 
So say for instance, I want to get rid of this light right here. Again, what you want to do is you want to highlight this and basically just take your lasso tool and circle that and click on generate a tool. I'm, I'm assuming you could just hit generate and it'll do its thing, but I'm gonna just type in remove, right? And let's see what happens. Let's see if it removes the light. This is like pretty much the basics of the tool right here. It's gone. It's just like that, it's gone. I mean, it's similar to like the content aware tool, but um, yeah, it did a great job. I mean, you can even go in and let's see, circle this right here. Like anything that's an eyesore that you wanna just get rid of. I'm gonna just click on generate tool. And now I'm gonna just click on generate and see what happens and see if it gets rid of that. Generated images were removed because they violate user. I'm not sure what is violating. See, I've been seeing that error a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, recently. So I'm not sure, um, but it is in beta version. So I'm kind of curious to, to know why would it tell me I'm violating the user rule when um, I shot this image. You know, so I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm just circle that. And I'm gonna just type in remove and see what happens instead of hitting generate a fill. Now I'm gonna click generate and see what happens. And voila, it's gone, just like that. So I mean, this is a, it's a this is a great tool if you wanna clean up your images. I mean, if you wanna get things removed, if you wanna add things. I think in the next tutorial, I'm gonna start uh, doing more portraits. And I also wanna dwell into how well this works with video because I know Photoshop does accept video files. Uh, which would be a great idea for set extensions or, you know, uh, um, just be able to transport uh, this over to After Effects or the Premiere based off like what it fills in. Also, I wanna see how well it works with like images created through AI for us like Mid Journey. So I'm impressed. Overall, um, you know, my thoughts on it, I'm gonna uh, dive more into this and try out different photos, but there's a ton of YouTube videos People are posting them right now. Uh, most of the photographers are dealing with like portraits, but I'm more artsy, so I'm gonna be seeing how this can, you know, benefit more people that are doing more photo composites and more like filming, visual effects. And I wanna see how it can help on that side leading up to film uh, compared to not just like portraits and, uh, you know, family photos and stuff, wedding photos, you know. You know, removing people, you know, family members out of the, you know, the picture. I mean, that's okay. We know, we know, it can do that. I've seen like hundreds of YouTube videos, but as far as like on the creative side, like how can it benefit you? Like if you have an idea and you can't really, you know, get it on an image, you might have an image that's close to it. But how can you know this new AI, you know, help you out? So we're gonna push some boundaries and see what happens. Either way, I think you guys are sitting with here watching as we try this out and. Uh, I'm gonna drop another tutorial. I'm about to go dig in the mid journey and see what images I've generated over the past few months. And cause there was a couple of images that I was like, oh, this looks great, but I can't really use it. Or, you know, um, it's just not wide enough. It's not enough space. And I'm gonna see what it can do. So we're gonna do that in the next video. All right. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, please. Follow me on TikTok too at Mr. Mydell and on Instagram at Will Mydell. All right. So I'll see y'all guys in the next one.